Everyone knows Corellia, one of the most legendary planets in the Star Wars galaxy, especially for their shipbuilding industry. Today, I want to take a quick look at the Corellian Engineering Corporation and explain why they're arguably the most important starship manufacturer in the modern Star Wars galaxy. Alright, so a little bit of history. The Corellian Engineering Corporation, otherwise known as the CEC, is the modern representation of Corellian starship design. According to the Essential Guide to Warfare, the CEC actually has unified all starship manufacturers centered in the Corellian system. And, well, Corellia has been building ships for a very long time. In Star Wars Legends, they directly contributed to the first modern style hyperdrive, which is still being used, albeit in a much more advanced form by ships in every era of Star Wars. The Corellian system had massive shipbuilding facilities. Of course, everyone knows of the titanic shipyards of Corellia itself, but most likely all of the planets in the Corellian system had some shipyards and there were secretive shipyards scattered throughout, as we'll talk about later. The Corellian Engineering Corporation is so important, not only because of its capacity for production, but because it also made some of the most famous starships in the Star Wars galaxy. I talked about this a lot in a video I did a few days ago on my favorite ships in Star Wars. There were lots of CEC entries, and that's because Corellian Engineering Corporation ships were typically very functional. They definitely have a certain look to them, and they're usually very highly upgradable and modular. It seems like even with strictly civilian craft, the CEC were often winking at their customers, giving them placements to put weapons or upgraded shields. The Corellian Engineering Corporation, for example, created the YT line, including the Millennium Falcon, which generally were known for being popular among smugglers and outlaws because they could be so easily modified and upgraded illegally. This is true for many other ship types. We saw, for example, the Action Transport, famously used by Talon Card as an incredibly effective smuggler slash general scoundrel ship. We have also the CR-90, which was used even by the New Republic just because of how effective it was as an overall design and how it could be modified for everything from extremely heavy combat to carrying starfighters. Similarly, we have the ancestor of the CR-90, the Consular class, which were refitted en masse by the Galactic Republic so that they could be more effective during the Clone Wars. And other vessels like the Gozanti were made in both private and military forms. So just to summarize, when it came to their ship designs, the Krillian Engineering Corporation largely focused on civilian vessels, but the ships they made were renowned for their quality and their modularity and were often used far beyond their initial stated design. And again, the best example of this is the Millennium Falcon. These ships were totally ubiquitous. Again, going back to the Essential Guide to Warfare, it says a quote that I really like. CEC showcase facilities are located in massive orbital factories and dockyards above Corellia, but are supported by a scattered, often secretive network of outstations, not to mention the aftermarket skills of every Corellian scoundrel with a hydro spanner. The new Essential Guide to Vehicles and Vessels also puts it quite plainly, calling the Corellian Engineering Corporation the most prolific and widely known starship manufacturing company in the galaxy with a reputation for fast, durable, and easily modified commercial vehicles. Also touching on the contrast that I hinted at earlier between CEC and other Starship manufacturers like Kuat Drive Yards, with the fact that most CEC products at least started out their lives as civilian rather than military vessels, and thus were probably a lot more common for the average individual to run into in the Star Wars galaxy. So that's part of what makes CEC king, just their ubiquity and the quality of their first party designs. But the Corellian Engineering Corporation was also known for producing starships outside of their own design. Famously, CEC was probably the best producer of the Imperial Star Destroyer, even better than Imperial owned shipyards. With a wink and a nod at A New Hope, the Essential Guide to Warfare says, CEC's largest yards can build dreadnoughts and its reputation for solid space frames and excellent engines mean it's often subcontracted to build large warships using other shipwrights designs. Corellian engineered Star Destroyers were considered the fastest ships in the Imperial Navy at both sublight 
and hyperspace speeds. I do want to note that in Star Wars canon, it also seems like Corellia was doing a lot of the New Republic's spaceship construction. We know they built, for example, the MC-85 alongside the Mon Calamari, and also created several smaller capital ship classes, including the Bunker Buster. Moving back to Legends, Corellia also made the Ranger class gunship for the New Republic, which was said to be a phenomenally designed and effective vessel, its first combat engagement against the Yuzhan Vong notwithstanding. And they were also contributing to massive starship construction, everything from Star Defenders to, again, most likely Star Destroyers and smaller ships. The Krillians would have also developed ships for their local defense fleets. For a long time, these probably would have been small anti-piracy vessels, but we do know that by the time of the Second Galactic Civil War, that Corellia was not only building a fleet of its own, but had constructed several large dreadnoughts in hidden asteroid fields. This would probably be considered a CEC project, unless the fundamental nature of Corellian shipbuilding had shifted massively at that point. But the size of the navy that the CEC is able to come up with for the Second Galactic Civil War really illustrates the scale of CEC's production. And it's interesting because if you talk about the Mon Calamari shipyards or the Kuat shipyards, you're talking about largely one planet with an orbital ring and probably some supporting stations. Corellia is different. It does have that major base of operations on Corellia, but most of the planets in the Corellian system probably had some shipyards on them, and the Essential God to Warfare hints at the fact that there was a lot more going on that the average person didn't see. So yeah, in my opinion, that's why Corellia is the king of starship manufacturers in Star Wars. Do you agree or do you disagree? Let me know all of that and more down below. Till next time, be safe, have a good one, and may the Force be with you.